Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. In this episode, we're going to look at how best to approach the restart of the Premier League season on the Sun Dream Team fantasy football game. We're going to start off by looking at how we can use the unlimited transfers, because at the minute we've got a wild card where you can use as many transfers as you'd like. We're going to go over the top fixtures to target, the top players to target, top budget picks, and then I'm going to finish up by sharing with you my first team draft filming this off the back of the World Cup final where Argentina have just beat France on penalties. An incredible game of football and what a way to end the tournament. Uh, very enjoyable and I wanted to say thank you to everyone that watched my videos throughout the Sun Dream Team World Cup. Um, hope you did well in your mini leagues and I just wanted to give a shout out as well to Ash Fergie's Apprentice. I'll share his Twitter handle on here but um, amazing achievement for him. He won first and second place on the overall leaderboard. Um, so Massive well done to him. He's been really supportive of the videos as well. And he's got a great community of um, Dream Team players on WhatsApp as well called the Pie Chat. So I just wanted to shout out all those guys as well and a massive achievement for him. But the World Cup is over and let's get straight back into the normal Sun Dream Team game. So as you probably have seen, we have got unlimited transfers at the minute until the restart of the season. So when you open up the app, you'll get a notification that you can make unlimited changes to your team before the season restarts on Tuesday, December the 20th. So if you completely clear your team, on the left hand side here I've got my old team. If you hit clear, you can completely start again and your budget will depend on how much you'd built throughout the season. So on this team, I've got 58.6 million and some of my other teams that aren't doing as well have got slightly less. I know some people have got above 60. So if you've got more budget, it's going to be an advantage. But overall, having unlimited transfers is going to help you to reset your team going into this new season. So a bit of a lifeline. If you're a bit of a nerd like me and you read the rules, there's a section that's called Transfer Period Calendar and it basically just shows you when each transfer window throughout the season opens and closes. And the unlimited one, it opened on the well, it says it opened on the 18th of November and it closes on the 20th of December at 6.59, which is a key time to play, uh, pay attention to. So it's not actually on the kickoff, it's at 6.59, um, so the rules say. Um, so right before the Carabao Cup games start, that will be the cut-off point and your unlimited transfer side will be locked in. And then after that, we'll have five transfers to use like we normally would, but this is till the 6th of January. So quite a short month to have five transfers, um, plenty of transfers to use in a short space of time. So you can take a few more risks and you've got enough there to reverse it if it doesn't work out. But after this period, it's all back to normal, five transfers a month. Before we get started on the fixtures, if you're watching on YouTube, this is going to be a fairly long episode, so I'm just going to put timestamps below in the description, and there's going to be automatic chapters as well, so you can just skip to bits if you want to just see the draft, or if you want to see the top players to pick, you can skip to those bits, but it's going to be a fairly in-depth episode because it is the first one before the restart. When I was working on my drafts, what I like to do is just lay out all the fixtures, and one thing to note, so this is the fixtures until the 6th of January when we get the next lot of transfers. Um, but there's a few teams that have got four fixtures up until the 6th of January, and there's a few teams that have got three. So in this um, image on the screen, on the left-hand side, I've got the teams with four. That's City, Liverpool, Man United, Leicester, Brighton, Wolves, Southampton, Newcastle, Forest, and Bournemouth. They've all got four fixtures, and that's because they're playing in this um, EFL Cup. And then the teams with three fixtures are Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal, Everton, Leeds, West Ham, Aston Villa, Palace, Fulham and Brentford. I'm obviously not going to read all of these fixtures out. You can hit pause um, and have a look yourselves. But if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that I've colour coded some of these fixtures. And this isn't a proper fixture difficulty rating. There's no science, no algorithms. I've just looked at the fixtures and thought in green, these are teams that I would definitely want to target. In yellow, I think these are good, and I'll, I'll probably look to get some of these players in my side as well. And the ones that I haven't highlighted, I'm probably not that interested in including these players in my team. Again, no science. This is just my opinion. So, out of the teams with four fixtures, I've highlighted Man City, Liverpool, Man United, and Newcastle. And of the teams that have three fixtures, I've highlighted Spurs and Arsenal. I think these teams have the best fixtures. Then, in yellow, teams I might look to add... Leicester, Brighton, Wolves, 
Chelsea, who I feel a bit harsh putting these in yellow, but they've got Bournemouth and Forest, which are good games, but then they have got Man City. And then actually after that, they've got Man City again. So a double header with Man City. So quite tough. And then I've highlighted Fulham as well, but there's, pro there's probably not too many players from there I'd like to target. So on to players to target, and we're going to start with Manchester City. Erling Haaland, 8.8 .8 million. He's just a must-have. Just get him in your team and leave him there, basically. 23 goals, 3 assists, and 4 star man awards so far in just 17 games. He's the highest point scorer in the game so far with 190 points. And he's fully rested after having no World Cup. He's probably going to be back to his scary best. So just get him in your team and leave him there. Kevin De Bruyne, a second, 7.9 million. Obviously quite pricey, but he's got three goals, 13 assists and five star man awards so far. He's the highest scoring midfielder in the game and he's fourth in the overall rankings. But I think he's going to absolutely feast going into this restart. He's been putting crosses on a plate for Batshuayi and Lukaku and Eden Hazard, all World Cup. And they've been useless. No one can put them away. But with Haaland up front, I expect him to be back to his best again. Then Cancelo at 6.8 million. He's another player that didn't really have a great World Cup. Uh, ended up not even starting for Portugal in the end. But two goals, five assists um, in the normal game. Ten clean sheets. One star man, which is kind of tough because in that Man City team with De Bruyne and Haaland, you're not going to get that many star man awards. But he's the second highest defender in the game and sixth overall. So... Again, he's one of these really high performers, but he is going to cost you at 6.8 million. But personally, he's someone that I'm going to put in my team. Then on to Phil Foden, 5.5. So he had a really strong start to the season. He's got eight goals, four assists, and one star man award. And he's ninth overall. But he started strong and then fell out of favour towards the end. I don't quite know what happened. Um, lots of different theories, but... I think maybe he just took his eye off, eye off the ball with the World Cup approaching and just Pep won't have that. So there was a few games that he was left out. Um, only got 24 points from his last 10 games for City. But now the World Cup's out of the way, I expect him to probably go back to his best. But I think I'm just going to wait and see um, whether he does get his place back straight away. I expect he does, but I just want to see how it goes. Then, of course, there's so many good players to choose from at City. This list could go on forever. Um, but I'm just going to highlight... Walker and Mares. So Walker was injured for quite a lot of the um, a lot of the season, but I think he should probably go back in at right back. Um, Three point eight million seems like quite a reasonable price for him. Um, it doesn't really chip in much with goals and assists, but. 3.8 to get into that back line. I think he should be pretty nailed at right back. They were playing a Kanji there and Stones there, but I think Walker should have enough to get his place back. And then Mares at 4.7. He's another player that didn't go to the World Cup, so he should be fresh going into this. Um, so he's a really streaky player, so he does sometimes punish you when you don't have him. And if you do have him, he can go a while without getting points, but he's someone I'm going to keep an eye on. Then on to Liverpool and Mohamed Salah at 8.6. He's the top pick for me, hands down. 13 goals, 4 assists, 2 star man awards so far. And he's the second highest point scorer on the game behind Haaland. Um, he was really frustrating in that first part of the season really. So a lot of people were ditching him when Liverpool weren't doing very well. And he was blanking a fair bit. But he has come back firing. He was really frustrating for me. Um, a lot of people were ditching him. And I hung on probably a bit longer than most. And when I finally did take him out that's when he scored that hat-trick against Rangers. So I, I did not time that well at all. But I'm going to put that to one side and put him straight back in my team. Then Darwin Nunes at 5.8. I think he is a good option. He's got eight goals, two assists and two star man awards so far. But he had a difficult start to the season and a poor World Cup. So we'll have to keep an eye on how he's going to go. I'm not going to put him in my team straight away. But I do think he's going to fill the void that Jota and Diaz have left. They're, they're out injured at the minute. Um, Diaz was injured it looked like he was coming back but it looks like he's out for a bit more time now as well so I think Darwin Nunes could probably pick up the slack from those two um, so worth keeping an eye on then Trent Alexander-Arnold at 5.9 again a slow start he did pick up towards the end but disappointing overall so far two goals one assist and one star man but I definitely expect that he's going to pick up um, and get back to his normal standards really he didn't play well barely played at all at the World Cup so I expect that he'll come back fresh and then Allison at 4.6 million um, so he's joint first for goalkeeper points at the minute with Pope and if you want a pick and stick keeper I think he's a very good choice he ends up right up there at the end of the season but he is 4.6 million so quite expensive but 
If you're just going to put him there and leave him there, I don't think there's many better picks. On to Manchester United then, and they've got really good fixtures to target. So I'm going to include a few Man United players in my team, definitely. But I'm going to start with Bruno Fernandes. I just have a really good feeling about him. 5.4 million. He did have a poor start, but he's got three goals, two assists and two star man awards. But I think now Ronaldo's left, um, I think he's going to step up as main man. He'll be back on penalties, which we know he... Uh, he has a reputation for putting those away. And he finished the season with a five-point average across his last five games. So I think he's going to really get back to his normal standards. And I have a really good feeling about Man United's fixtures. So I expect he's going to step up and I'm definitely going to put him in my team. Then Rashford at 4.5. He's got eight goals, three assists and two star man awards. And I was really impressed with him at the back of end, back end of last season, but also at the World Cup. Um, some really good finishes from him and that, I really like that free kick as well um, he's United's top point scorer actually on Dream Team at the minute and he's averaging 4.3 points per game um, and I just think he looks back to his best and playing with confidence again so definitely someone to consider then I'm going to highlight Luke Shaw at 3.5 million he did perform well at the Euros and he's won his place back at Man United but I'm mostly looking at him because Delo had a hamstring injury when he come back from the World Cup so just about keeping an eye on whether or not Delo's going to be fit. If Delo's fit to start the season or restart the season, I'd go with Delo. But if not, I'd look at Luke Shaw. Um, the only downside, though, is that Varane has just been playing in the World Cup final and he looked bloody exhausted by the end. And you've also got Lissandro Martinez as well. So those two key players from the Man United defence prob are probably going to be coming back late from the World Cup. So I don't know how that might affect Man United's back line. But I'd probably look at Shaw or Delo um, to get one of those defenders in. And then David De Gea at 3.4 million as your keeper. If you did want to double up, De Gea and uh, Delo or De Gea and Shaw could be good options. He's the fourth highest scoring keeper. They've got really good fixtures, lots of home games. Um, the only worry is, like I said, about their unsettled backline, really. But we'll see. We've got Slabed, who's coming off the back of a really good World Cup or fairly good World Cup. And there might be Lindelof as well that fills in while Varane and Martinez are out. So just keep an eye on the back line. But De Gea, Shaw or Delo are probably the best options at the back, I think. Then on to Newcastle, who have been a really good surprise so far this season. And Kieran Trippier has been brilliant. 5.4 million. He's on 111 points. Joint most star man awards with five. One goal, four assists and 13 ratings out of 17 games. So... Who scored? Absolutely love him. I did a video ages ago um, just showing why he gets star man so much and the ratings. And he's just putting in so many crosses. So much of Newcastle's play goes down his side. He's on set pieces. Yeah, he, he's pretty much ticking all the boxes. So definitely someone that yeah, I'd put in my team. Then Almoron at 3.3 million. He's been on fire at the end of last season. Um, eight goals, one assist. And yeah, just... Let's hope he picks up where he left off, really. But definitely someone that I'm going to include as well. So 3.3 million for him. Wilson at 4.5 is an interesting one. If I didn't already have Trippier and Almiron, I'm giving away a bit of my uh, draft for later. But if I didn't have Trippier and Almiron, I think Wilson's a really good option. Um, he's the same price point as Rashford. But Wilson does take penalties for um, Newcastle. So I think that's a, a big bonus for him. Um, six goals, two assists from 11 games. And then he's got a 5.4 average rating for his, um, or average points, sorry, for his last five games. So he did finish the season really strong. And you've got, um, I think it's Isak is out at the minute as well. So he's, Wilson's pretty nailed. Um, and then Fabian Scher is 3.6 million. Uh, if you couldn't afford Trippier or you did want to double up, he could be a fairly good option. But personally, I'd go with Trippier. And on to Spurs, so Harry Kane at 6.9 is quite a bit cheaper than Salah and Haaland. He's got 13 goals, 4 assists, 12-7 um, ratings. Always one of the best options you can choose from on some Dream Team. But with Haaland and Salah, it does make it very difficult to get all three in your team and have quite a balanced team. So you might have to make some sacrifices. He's obviously a really good player to have, takes penalties, but personally, I'm favouring Haaland and Salah at the minute, but I wouldn't blame you if you do bring in Harry Kane. I think he should probably get over the um, the penalty miss and the World Cup defeat fairly well. I'm not expecting him to have any sort of um, dip in form 
from the World Cup, but it is maybe something to consider. Head on to Kulisevsky at 3.5 million. He had a big spell injured, so missed a lot of games, um, but come back on really good form. He's got two assists from his last three games, so quite a reasonable price at 3.5 million. And Richarlison's out injured as well at the minute, so he should be pretty nailed on for that right wing position. Obviously Kane down the middle and Son on the left. I'm not sure about Son. He had a really quiet start to the season, um, not really performed to his usual standards, and he didn't really do much at the World Cup, although it was in a fairly um, weakened team. But yeah, I've not really liked the look of Son so far, and I'd wait until he picks up the form before I chose him. Then I'm just going to point out Hoiberg. I think we've probably missed the, missed the boat here. So he's up to 3.1 million now, but really overperforming, I think. So four goals, four assists for him so far. And that's a really great return for someone that's not not typically a goal scorer or a sister, but he's done really well so far this season. And on to my team, Arsenal. Probably why I've got so many names here, to be fair, but just the team that I feel like I know the most about. So Saka at 4.2 million. Um, I think he probably should make the first game back after the World Cup. He hasn't played in any of the sort of preseason games yet, but he's got five goals, seven assists. He's the penalty taker at the minute. And him and Martinelli are going to really have to step up to help carry the load without Gabriel Jesus. So that's going to be something to consider maybe without Jesus. Saka's form could dip. There might not be as op many opportunities for him. So we'll wait and see. But I think 4.2 is a really good price for Saka. Then you've got Gabriel at 4 million. I really like this option. So he's got two goals so far, but he's a real attacking threat from corners. He did score one in one of um, Arsenal's warm-up games. He scored a really good header. Um, so Arsenal, got, well, he got 10 clean sheet points for Arsenal and two star man awards. Um, and out of the Arsenal defenders, I'm not really sure there's that much choice at the minute because Zinchenko's not fully fit. He hasn't been involved in the pre-season or mid-season friendly games. Um, Tommy Asu's a bit of a doubt now as well. He missed out on the last friendly. Um, he's got an injury doubt. Saliba might be a little bit late back from the World Cup, but he didn't really play any minutes for France, so he should be fresh when he does come back. So out of all those options, really, I think Gabriel's the standout pick really other than that you have got Ben White but I think Gabriel brings a lot more attacking threat and they're quite a similar price and Gabriel Martinelli at 3.2 million he's been a really good player to own on the dream team so far five goals two assists and he started out really cheap he's up to 3.2 million now but I still think that's quite reasonable but it does take up a striker spot so he's having a good season hopefully Having Jesus out isn't going to take too much of an effect on him, but we'll wait and see. Then you've got Erdegaard at 2.9 million, who I think that's a really good price for him. And I think he's been really overperforming, well, my expectations anyway, with attacking returns. I always get the feeling that he's that sort of player that makes nice passes and nice build up, but doesn't really have any um, end product. But six goals, two assists is really good so far. Um, three star man awards. And he did score a lovely free kick in one of the uh, warm-up games as well. So on set pieces, a good threat from there too. And then Eddie Nketiah, who could be the bargain of the century, but we will wait and see. It's, it's a risk, but he's a really cheap price at 2.3 million. So he's going to be the obvious pick to replace Gabriel Jesus. And at 2.3, you should really be getting your money's worth from him. He finished on 10 goals last season in total, and that's five from the EFL Cup and five from the Premier League in just 14 appearances. 12 of those were starts as well, so he has got a good attack in return there, but a lot of them were in the League Cup, so you have got to sort of take that with a pinch of salt a little bit. But I'm not sure how I think he'll get on, but I do think at 2.3, he will be a good option. Um, he did just, uh, he missed a sitter in one of the warm up games, but I think he did also score a goal that was ruled out for offside. So he always has been a good finisher, but I still think he has got a lot to prove. Then on to Chelsea, and I, I still just don't know how I feel about Chelsea at the minute with under Potter. So many changes, so many players that are not really performing to their best in positions where you don't normally expect them to be. So it's a hard one at the minute to choose Chelsea players. But Thiago Silva at 5.7 million. Um, it's expensive, but he's got he's had 12 ratings so far, four star man awards and two assists. But he only had four clean sheets with Chelsea, where that's where the, most of their defensive players have struggled. They've lacked clean sheets so far this season. Obviously, we just saw Gabriel had 10. Thiago Silva's only had four. So that's that's quite a struggle at 5.7 million to really justify that. But if you do think they're going to start keeping solid or you want to give it a few games first, I do think he's probably the best pick from the defence until at least um, until at least James comes back 
or Cucurella starts performing. Then I've got Sterling at 4.2, so five goals, two assists from him. But again, not been anywhere near his usual standards in terms of dream team points anyway. He's always been one of them names that's right up there. But I don't actually blame him. I just think that's down to how he's been used. He's been playing in that more sort of... I mean, it is an attacking wing back, and it's more of a winger, but he just doesn't look as comfortable as he previously has been playing for Chelsea. So we'll wait and see how he gets on. I'm going to keep an eye on him at 4.2 million. If he does take off, that is a good price, but I'm just not sure how he's going to be used yet. Cucurella then at 3 million. He's had two assists so far, but he's definitely not been as attacking as I would have expected. Um, Chelsea did have some defensive problems, and he ended up playing sort of as the left centre-back in a free, which I knew he could do, but I was expecting him to play more as a left back really for Chelsea. So he's the cheapest route into their defence, which is good at three million. But I'd like to see some more attacking returns and him playing in more of an advanced position really. Then I'm going to put a note down for James and Mount. Um, I'm not sure if James is back fit yet. So when he is fit, he's always a really good one to consider, but he does get injured so regularly. So it's about getting on him at the right time. And then Mount as well. I just want to see some consistency from him in terms of where he plays and how he plays. Because, yeah, that seems to be the running problem with Chelsea players at the minute, especially when it comes to Dream Team. You just can't really predict where they're going to play or how they're going to perform. Then on to Leicester, who have got some good fixtures as well. Um, James Madison is the standout performer there at 5.7 million. He's got seven goals, four assists, and he's the fifth highest scoring midfielder in the game. So he is a really good option. But the only downside is that there's a lot of choice there in those midfield slots with like De Bruyne, Foden, Saka, Bruno Fernandes. So he's quite expensive as well. So um, he's actually more expensive than Foden, Saka and Bruno Fernandes. So while I do think he's a really good pick, it's just deciding, is he a better option than Foden, Saka and Bruno Fernandes? And personally, I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Madison, but I wouldn't blame anyone that does. Then you've got Harvey Barnes at 4.8 million. He's got six goals, one assist, and is a very good attacking option. I've had him every season. I find myself having him in my team, but I don't always manage to get him at the right time. He's a really streaky player, and it's hard to predict when he's going to go on a good run of scoring. But he finished the season in really good form. Um, four goals, one assist in his last six games. So hopefully he can come back firing. And I do think, although 4.8 is probably quite expensive for um, the Leicester midfielder, I do think he is a good option. Also, when he scores, it's great to shout Harvey Barnes, isn't it? We all like that. So Then the other player that I'm going to highlight from Leicester is Castane at 3.5 million. Didn't have a great World Cup at, uh, with Belgium. He actually ended up playing sort of as um, one of the third centre-backs in a back five, which was kind of strange. I was expecting him to be more of an attacking option. But for Leicester, he's a really attacking defender. One goal, two assists so far. But his last five average was um, 6.2 points. So he's been really good for them. And Leicester were really quite solid towards the back of last season. They started poorly, but they did really pick up. Um, one weird thing, though, he's 3.5 million. Um, you've got Valt Face, who's 3.3, who's got more points. But I just think Castane is a very good attacking threat. And if he starts to get more attacking returns, he'll, he'll surpass face, definitely. So I think Castane is the best option from Leicester. Then on to Brighton. And I don't know how I came up with so many players for Brighton, really. They're quite a strange team. They've got so many good options, both budget and slightly more expensive. But yeah, I really like their budget options. And I'm going to highlight Estepinion at 1.4 million. It would be a punt, but it's a cheap punt. And I really liked his performances throughout the World Cup. I think he could be a, a good attacking threat for Brighton. They do get their um, wing backs quite far forward. And he does look like he has got some end product in him. He hasn't reflected in his numbers so far. But I have a feeling he's going to come good. And I'm going to take a punt on him. Um, the only downside about that is that Brighton haven't been that good defensively under De Zerbe. Um, they've been entertaining. But... They haven't kept a clean sheet in their last five games, which is quite concerning. But at 1.4, I'm, I'm willing to take the punt on him. Then Pascal Gross at 2.6 million. He's got five goals, two assists and two star man awards. So quite a good attack in return for someone at 2.6 million. But there are some good options around that price point as well. So not someone I'd bring in. You've got Matoma though, who's really exciting. 1.7 million again. So again, another really good budget pick. Um, and finished the season strong. So two goals, one assist for him. He had a 5.2 average from his last five games. So if he can pick up where he left off, he'd be really good. Um, 
The only thing I would say could be a slight rotation risk because they've got some good options there, but he mostly plays on the left wing for Brighton. Trossard I have to throw in there at 4.7 million because um, he has got seven goals and three assists and he has been really good, but I just think at 4.7 million, he's, he's down as a striker, so I just feel like that striker slot can be used so much better but I have to mention him because he's had such a good season but for me I'd rather go with someone like Rashford who's cheaper or even Wilson that's cheaper so I think it's a bit of a waste of a striker spot but if he was a midfielder I, I would consider him I think then I'm just going to mention um, Sanchez at 2.1 could be a budget keeper and then McAllister Alexis McAllister he's been incredible throughout the World Cup what a one of Argentina's best players. He's listed at 3 million and he's had really good attacking returns for Brighton. So after the World Cup, once he comes back, once he's finished celebrating, he could be a really good player to consider. Um, and I think they might end up having a hard time keeping hold of him after getting his hands on a World Cup um, winner's medal. So yeah, very impressive from McAllister. Obviously, I wouldn't consider him straight away because there'll be a bit of time that he'll need to recover. But another really good option. Then on to the final few. So we've got Wolves. And I would prefer to wait and see how they line up and play under their new manager. I'm not really sure what to expect from them. And they were quite bad towards the end of last season so or before the break. Um, so Jose Sarr at 2.8. He used to be fairly solid and performed quite well for um, Wolves when they were defending well. So he is someone to keep an eye on. But again, I just want to see what the new manager plays like. Um, and then the wing back options are always quite good to choose from. But... Again, I just want to see the lineups. If Samedo does come back in favour, he's 1.5 million, so very cheap. He has performed well in previous seasons. I think, I think it was either last season or the season before he done really well. And then Ruben Neves at 2.8. He is on penalties and set pieces, but at 2.8 million, I just think you can spend that money better. Um, Erdegaard at 2.9, for example. But yeah, I'm going to mention him because he... He has been doing quite well so far this season, but I just think there's better choices. Last but not least, Fulham. You've got Mitrovic at 4.9 million. He's got nine goals and he's the ninth highest striker. Um, they've got Palace, Southampton, Leicester, which are fairly decent fixtures. But again, I think at 4.9 million, I'd prefer someone like Rashford or Wilson. And then you've got Pereira at 2.7. Um, he's got two goals and four assists and he's been taking pretty much all of the set pieces apart from the penalties, which Mitrovic takes. But again, I just think there's better players. Then I thought I'd just share my top budget picks with you. So I've gone 2.5 million and under and 3 million and under. I just thought I'd share this bit because every time I was making my uh, unlimited transfer drafts, you get to a point where you're trying to fit players in and you, if you're like me, you always go over budget. So here are some cheaper picks that I think could be good value and help you pick your team basically so 2.5 and under you're eddie Nketiah at arsenal obviously taking jesus's place you've got harvey elliott from liverpool a little bit of a rotation risk but 2.3 million is a bit of a bargain there lindelof if Varane and lissandra martinez are not fit to get back in the team then lindelof at 2.2 million could be quite cheap with those good man united fixtures but i don't expect him to hold his place there You've got Joe Willock at 2.4 at Newcastle. He's got quite a good attacking threat. Sessegnon at 1.8 million is interesting from Spurs. I'm not sure how long he'll keep his place, but Perisic did go quite deep in the tournament with um, a lot of minutes under his belt as well. So we might see Sessegnon at 1.8 million playing a, quite a few minutes. I highlighted Estepinion. I've already spoke about him. And then Matoma at 1.7 from Brighton as well has been pretty good attacking. Then slightly more expensive at 3. million and under. Erdegaard, who I mentioned, at 2.9. I think I really like that as an option. Uh, Pascal Gross at 2.6. Kepper in goal for Chelsea. I think Mendy could be back, but we'll see. Kepper was in favour before the end of the season at 3 million. You've got Cucurella at 3 million, who I mentioned. Granit Xhaka for Arsenal. Obviously been chipping in with goals and assists this season. He's only 2.4. You've got Paqueta at West Ham. Was frustrating to own um, I had him throughout bits of the season before the break um, and I didn't really like having him as an option but he was impressive in the World Cup again so 2.7 for him and then Ruben Neves who I mentioned at 2.8 so these are ones that you you might want to fill in so that you can afford some of the more expensive players elsewhere Another handy thing that I thought I could share with you guys was players that are on four yellow cards. So if you get five yellow cards within your first 19 Premier League games, you get a one match ban. So you don't want to bring in a player and then find out that 
they get booked in that first game back and then they're out for a game. So I thought I'd share this with you. This isn't all the players that are on four yellow cards, but this is the, these are the popular players that you might end up picking that are on four yellow cards. So Harry Kane is actually on four yellows. So he's going to be walking a bit of a tightrope going into that um, first game. You've got William Saliba at Arsenal, who probably will be back a little bit later, but he's still on a yellow. Um, Mitrovic up front. He's a bit of a hothead as well, so he's one away. You've got Fabian Cher, you've got McAllister, and then you've got Gabriel Jesus, who's injured anyway. But I just thought this would be useful to share with you. I think this all resets after 19 Premier League games, but at the moment, most teams have only played 14 or 15 games. So we've still got a little bit longer for this to last. So just bear in mind when you're picking players that they could end up getting banned if they're on this list. If you've enjoyed the video so far, please do subscribe to us on YouTube. You'll get kept more up to date with our regular Sun Dream Team content. And if you're listening on Spotify as well, please do give us a follow on there. So I'm going to move on to um, my first unlimited transfer draft. And I'm going to show you two drafts just because I thought it'd be handy. This is my team that's got 58.6 million in the bank. Everyone's is going to be different, but... I'm going to start with this 58.6 one and I'm going to show you one of my other teams that's got slightly less. Just in case you're watching and your budget's slightly less, you might find that a little bit more handy. But everyone's budget's going to be different. So, yeah, you've got, you've got to work with what you've got, really. But this is how I'm lining it up. So 58.6 million and I've got 2 million left, uh, sorry, 0 0.2 million left in the bank. So I'm having David De Gea in goal. He's got Burnley at home and then Nottingham Forest at home. So two good fixtures to start off there. And it doesn't look like Ten Hag usually um, rotates that keeper spot really in the Europa League or the Cup competition. So I'm quite confident that he'll play both. And they do look like favourable fixtures really. I know Burnley aren't quite the Burnley of old. They, they are a lot more attacking under company. So we'll wait and see how that goes. But I'm quite, I'm quite confident in De Gea at the minute. Then I'm going to go with Cancelo at 6.8. Obviously, it's a hard fixture at first um, against Liverpool. And then they've got Leeds away. It's always a tough one to get Cancelo in because 6.8 million is really expensive for a defender. But he does usually deliver. So I'm going to go with him. And then Kieran Trippier, he's got Bournemouth and Leicester. So Bournemouth at home, Leicester away. That Bournemouth fixture looks really good. And then Leicester might be a bit tougher, but Trippier does seem to deliver attacking returns and those ratings. So even in games where they don't keep a clean sheet, there is a good chance of getting a return from him. And then Estepinion at 1.4 million. He's my budget enabler player at 1.4. It lets me bring in some more big hitters into my side. And I'm going to just give him a go. It's going to be a hard one to replace. So if it doesn't work out, I'm probably going to have to do two moves to change it around. But I'm going to give it a go and see how we go with him. He's got Charlton away and Southampton away. Then I'm picking Kevin De Bruyne in midfield. That combination of Cancelo, De Bruyne and Haaland is one I really like for City. So I'm going with De Bruyne. He's got Liverpool at home and Leeds away. But I just think that link up between Haaland and De Bruyne is going to just be so valuable. Um, I think that if De Bruyne is getting assists, it's probably going to be Haaland that he's assisting. So I think there's good potential to get sort of double points having both of them in your team. Then I'm going to go with Almiron at 3.3 million. Although his price has risen quite a bit, I still think he's underpriced at the minute. So Bournemouth again at home and Leicester away. And then like I said in the previous clips, um, Bruno Fernandes at 5.4. It's quite expensive, but I think he's going to be the main man now. So with penalties, Ronaldo out of the equation. He's got Burnley and Forest. I think he's going to be a good pick. And then I'm going to go with Erdegaard at 2.9 million. So... I do like this Erdegaard pick, but the only downside is he's potentially only got the one game against... Well, he has only got the one game against West Ham. So no cup game for Arsenal. Um, we were eliminated by Brighton, I think it was. It might have even been a Matoma goal, actually. Um, but yeah, only one game for Arsenal. So a little bit a little bit trickier there. Uh, maybe I might look to bring in someone that's got a cup game and then bring Erdegaard in after. But at the minute, I'm going to just stick with Erdegaard. Then up front... I really like this front three, Haaland, Salah and Rashford. So Haaland, 8.8 .8 million. He's got Liverpool first game, but he can score against anyone. And I think I'm expecting both teams to go full strength. I'm not sure. City always seem to take the League Cup really seriously. And Liverpool seem to take it seriously when they get a good opposition. Um, so I think this is going to be a, a great game to start the season off with. And then Salah... 
he's obviously on penalties as well. So Man City away, Aston Villa away. And then Rashford at 4.5 million. You can probably tell from the last clips. I'm really liking him at the minute. And I think he's going to be really good value. Um, obviously without Ronaldo. I guess there's a chance that he could play through the middle as well. But I do think he's better off the left. But Burnley at home and Forrest at home. I expect Rashford to be coming back firing. So pretty happy with that team so far. But this is my team with more budget. Um, so the only thing that would concern me about this team at the minute looking at it is that I have a lack of Liverpool defence. Um, I know they haven't been the best, but I just think that's always somewhere that I can trip up. Like, you probably do want City and Liverpool in your defence, I would say, but budget-wise, I just couldn't fit it in at the minute. So that could be something I need to change later on. And I mentioned also um, Erdegaard. He's only got the one game, so maybe I might look to move someone in, um, potentially from Leicester that plays twice in the EFL Cup. I might look to bring Erdegaard out for a Leicester defender potentially before that game kicks off. But other than that, I'm fairly happy with this draft. And on to my team that's got a budget of 55.3 million. Um, this team, I've tried to keep as similar to the previous team as I could. But obviously with less budget, I've had to make a few sacrifices elsewhere. So this is the best I think I could get for 55.3 million budget. Uh, I've got David De Gea in goal. I've downgraded Cancelo to Walker to free up some budget elsewhere. I've got Trippier, and then I've got Shaw instead of Estupinion. I've downgraded Kevin De Bruyne to Phil Foden, who also has really good attacking returns. He's only 5.5. I've still got Bruno, Almiron, and Erdegaard, who, with Erdegaard, I'd probably look to do a similar thing with the Leicester uh, defender so I could get an extra game in the Carabao Cup. And then I can still afford with this team Haaland, Salah, and Rashford up front. So the main sacrifices that I had to make to um, fit this team to the budget was Cancelo and Kevin De Bruyne down to Walker and Foden. So it's not a bad team, but obviously it's nicer to have Cancelo and Kevin De Bruyne in there. Something that was a bit um, frustrating was if I did take Shaw out and put Estepinion in, I was 0.1 off affording um, Kevin De Bruyne. So there is an option to potentially wiggle things around and get Kevin De Bruyne back in but I quite like how this team is set up for 55.3 million and then I have 0.2 in the bank as well so I'm going to leave it there for that episode so if you've taken anything valuable from it at all um, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Sun Dream Team content and if you're listening on Spotify give us a follow on there as well sorry it was a really long episode but I wanted to make it as valuable as we could before the restart and then when we go back to the normal videos they'll be a lot small uh, a lot shorter than this one but yeah a lot of information there but i hope it was useful for you so i'll see you on the next episode and have a good start to the season